Hello, everyone. My name is Varese Wallace. I'm an evangelist with Abundant Faith Cathedral Church located in Detroit, and the bishop is Joel T. Wallace. I thank you for tuning in. I'm going to have a new show starting soon, and it's called The Total You. One day when Pastor and I were driving in, the Lord dropped in my spirit about a program that I could have and he told me to name it The Total You, and I couldn't understand what that was all about. But I got a scripture, and the scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, and I'm gonna read it from the Amplified Bible. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you through and through, that is, separate you from profane and vulgar things, and make you pure and whole and undamaged, consecrated to him, set apart for his purpose, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept blameless and complete and be found blameless, I'm sorry, be found blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that mean? That God pictures us as a whole person, mind, body, soul, and spirit. That we're different entities and he considers us as a whole thing, one thing. Okay? And so he wants to make sure that we're in alignment, that our mind is aligned, our body is in alignment, our soul is alignment, and our spirit is in alignment. So it's in harmony. And he's the one who's gonna help us. And so this show is gonna be about different things that can come in and conflict us and cause us problems with our mind. You know how we get an anxious about things, how certain people can get so distraught and they can become depressed and irritable and mean ooh, and hateful. Wait a minute. That's contrary to what God has said about us being of love. Talk about the body. We're going to be talking about things that come against the body. We've got illnesses that come in and they afflict the bodies. We've got joint problems. We've got diabetes. We've got lupus. We've got different things, cancer things. We've got things that afflict the body. And when what happens when we get afflicted in the body? We get so run down. We get tired. We get irritable. And it sees all it affects the whole thing. You ever wonder why a person say, well, I got a backache? And they, they seem like the whole body is all off. They stop, the posture is all cockeyed, and then they don't walk straight. They don't move like they used to move. They can't go out and do anything like they used to do. It affects the whole body. We're connected. And then don't forget the spirit. God is a spirit. And so we've got to make sure that we're in connection. And so don't forget, this is about the total you. Bring it in alignment so that God can work for each one of us and he can put us in complete harmony. Mind, body, soul, and spirit. The total you. I hope you tune in. We're going to be here Saturday, Sunday through Saturday at 7 in the morning and 7 in the evening. So please tune in. I'll have different people come in to talk about that mind, body, soul, and spirit. Please stay tuned. See you soon. Thank you for tuning in to The Total You, amen. This is your event, your hostess, Evangelist Varese Wallace. And we're returning because I have learned a lot more things about my guest, <laughs> Natasha Johnson. And we want to share this with you. And one of the things I want to share with you is the fact that this is a young lady. She's not old, okay? I'm the oldest one. But she's not an old woman or young lady. And she's raising two young ladies in a time this time. And I noticed that one of the things that was said was that she had had some problems with bullying with her children at their schools. I'm going to ask you how you handled that. <laughs> so first of all, you got to pray when situations like that come because you have like your natural instinct may just be like to retaliate because someone hurt your child, but you can't hurt other people's children. So, okay. <laughs> Um, just trying to stay in constant communication with the school, 
which isn't always uh, an easy task. Okay. Um, making sure and instilling in my daughter that she is not the problem. Okay. The reason that children act the way that they do. Okay. Um, and I mean, just a whole lot of prayer. I mean, and I entertain everything, therapy, whatever that she feels like she needs. Okay. You know, we keep a very open, a very, very open relationship. Like, okay. she can tell me whatever she wants to as long as it's in a respectable Wait. manner. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't care what it is. She can share, even if it's about me. Okay. I don't mind her sharing. But so we just have to keep that open. And then you just have to have, like I say, you got to have strong faith in prayer because Amen. we live in a... A tough time right now, All and right. we can't control other people. So, so she uh, did. She feel like she was the one who was the problem at the at the point. Tell us exactly what happened. Well, just recently, she a student that she felt was a friend. Okay. Pushed her down a flight of stairs, and she broke her foot. See, come on, come on. This is not just somebody talking. This is someone who is physically bullying this young lady. How old is Morg? She's it's more, 12. Right? She's mm -hmm. 12. Okay. She's 12. And yeah, they walk down one flight of stairs, locked arms like best friends. Even they're not best friends, but close friends. And when she turned her back, when she thought the friend was going on to her class, and she turned her back to go down the next flight of stairs, she pushed her with two hands down the flight of stairs. Oh my God. And thankfully, we only had a broken foot. Okay. Because that could have been tragic. She could have been paralyzed. She could have. Yes. She could have passed away if she would have yes. hit her head or something the wrong way. So, I mean, it was just a lot of steps that were uncomfortable for her and me, like talking to the police and okay. learning the fate of her injuries okay. and not being able to participate in dance and volleyball, things that she enjoys. It's like she's being punished okay. for being a victim. So okay. just trying to keep her spirits up during that process and making okay. sure that, you know, she knew that this time would pass. Uh, whatever reprimands that the young lady got that was out of our hands. Okay. But that there would be some okay. that, you know, me as her parent, I wasn't going to just turn a blind eye oh, to really? it and just okay. walk away. We're going to make sure that something <laughs> okay. happens because okay. you didn't deserve it, you okay. know. And unfortunately, a horrible um, incident to happen, like, on friendship okay. so early when you're still trying to learn about making friends and you okay. want friends and then you see... Like how they say backstabbers, literally, okay. literally, can really happen. She's learning this lesson very early. Very and, early. Uh, and I think that was the hardest part okay. for her. Like, that's my friend. I talk to her on the phone and FaceTime and all that all day long. And then in a split second, it's like okay. it's, that's all over with. Okay, I'm going to go two things I want to know. Mm -hmm. You said you had to make a police record. How did the police respond to this? Um, they were very helpful, actually. Okay. Um. Even the officer who uh, took our report, you know, she really spoke to her and told her, you know, don't feel bad. Okay. You know, don't feel like you're doing something to your friend. You need to think about yourself and that you're defending ah, yourself. Okay. And she did tell her, like, what she did, you know, could have been an end of life for you. Had okay. you hit your head or something, okay. tumbling and down 20, 25 steps. Yes. And these were, were they cement? Yes. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we thank and praise the Lord that she okay and only broke her ankle, right? Yeah, she broke her foot. Okay. And it's healed now and she's fine and able to get back in her activities. But it's still a process because they did allow the young lady to come back to school and not have contact. But, you know, you still have to see. That young lady, yes. 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 The one who caused harm to you and, you know, keep your emotions together. Okay. To not want to retaliate but you know that's a normal emotion to have yeah. you hurt me i hurt you but so it's kind of hard and plus she's just like she's not that kind of kid she's okay she's like the sweetest little like so she, morgan is kind of still hurt yeah move them okay. past it you know as days go yeah but yeah okay absolutely and i'm glad you said something about whatever she needs to get past this point you are even willing to maybe see a Doctor or therapist. Mm -hmm. therapist. Mm -hmm. Okay. And see, a lot, I'm going to say this, a lot of black families don't believe in that type that of help. Mm -hmm. They, they don't believe that they can, that that's something they can access. Something's wrong with you yeah. if you don't have yeah, therapy. But, and it's not. Thank you. It's not. Thank Baby, you. I'm not equipped to talk her through 
okay. the situation. So maybe someone trained can help her okay. through the situation. Because sometimes our children go through things that we've never even encountered or thought to happen. Okay. And when it happens and you want them to be able to move past it, if you don't have the tools in your tank belt you. to help them fix it, thank you. You need to reach out to somebody who can. And I'm gonna say this: we are in a different generation where we didn't used to have bullying like it is now, yeah. and we didn't have to deal with this. Mm -hmm. But like you said, this is something you've got to learn how to deal with, and not only you learn how to deal with it, you got to also teach your child how to deal with it. Yeah, because there's always been some kind of bullying, but okay, just the world that we live in is just progresses like you have when you got bullied you violent. might have had a problem yeah. just at school and now you, it goes home on the internet or social media is not just you and another child in class anymore Amen. it can linger okay. on and some of it's even praised in the things that they seen oh see. you know okay. online to be the mean girl and stuff like that okay so and it's I'm going to ask another happened. question, too, because mm -hmm. I'm sure that they weren't the only children on the steps. They were not. So what happened to the other children? Did they step in to help Morgan? What happened? One of her friends did. She even asked the girl, why did you push her? Okay. And she helped her get to the office so okay. that she can get some help. Okay. So someone else was there, so they witnessed it. So, yes. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And it was on camera, so okay. it was not just like a... He say, she say. Okay. Situation. So the school system actually stepped in also. Yes. Can you say that? <laughs> <laughs> I see a hesitation, but. Yeah. That was not, um, that was not what I expected from okay. the school. Because she actually called and told me what happened. No one oh, okay. from the school. But once I do reach out, then I'll get a response when I was kind of thinking more that they would be the ones reaching out to me. So um, that's something that they definitely need to work on and something okay. that I am not letting rest until. Okay. Yeah. And a lot of, <laughs> and I thank you for being the kind of parent that is on top of things. Mm -hmm. Some families, some people don't have a parent that is aware of what's going on with their child. And that child does like you said, she was the one who called you. What if she hadn't called you? Yeah, you know, what if she didn't have her cell phone to reach right. out to me? Yes. Will we have waited hours or until you all figured out what you wanted to happen before you called? Or covered up for that matter. We, we, I would never know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Bullying is real. Mm -hmm. And we need as parents, I don't care if you're married or single, mm -hmm. you need to be in your children's lives. Yes. At this point, we need to be able, like you said, to have an open communication. Yes. Whatever that child wants to talk about. Stay in their business. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> don't, I mean, don't judge them. No. Because, yeah, that's what they, they're expecting you to judge them. That's true. They're expecting you to come down hard on them. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to be the grown-up. <laughs> I'm not going to do this. I'm holding all this emotion in so this child can get their emotions out. Yeah, because a lot of conversations, they come talk about you like, I do not want to hear this. Come Lord, on. I don't want to hear this. But you have to sit through it. See, yeah. And take it all in so you can know like when things do happen, where your child may stand. Because okay. if they're just listening to you when they come home and you think, oh, I just got this little pro poster child. But when she, when we talk and she'll say such and such did this or that, and I'm like, oh, well, what did you do? Like, you know, so you can yeah. figure out the whole situation yeah. okay. and how they react in those situations. And teach them a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. I, I hate. still I still go through phones. I still listen to uh -oh. conversations. Uh -oh. I, I don't believe oh, wait, wait. that. Are you that rotator, <laughs> what do you call it, a rotor mom? <laughs> Yeah, I would pick that phone up in a flash and see what's in there. See? Because if you don't know, and you can't get caught up in just everything that you have. Because life is busy, so it's easy to get caught up caught in just okay. everything, parenting and work and all that. And see, but that's is, part yeah. of it. And see, this is a mom who's, like I said, single, but she's got other activities that she's involved in, but she's not putting that child last. Never. Never. Never put that child last. No matter how busy you get, always take time out for the child. 
Absolutely. Amen. So we thank you. Amen. We know that this was kind of a difficult thing to talk about oh, yeah. because I know we've never had to really deal with as much as we have now. Mm -hmm. And it takes a diff it takes a different skill set now to deal with all the things that are coming down for the children. Yes. And they're getting into a lot more than we even were aware of when we were coming up. Yeah. They're overexposed and underprotected. Uh oh for sure. I like that one. Yeah. Overexposed and, and underprotected. underprotected. Mm -hmm. These are our children. Come on. Amen. So we thank you for doing just sharing that with us. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I learned about my mm -hmm. guest was the fact that the business she's in is real estate. So tell us about this real estate venture. <laughs> it's a roller coaster, but I do love it. Amen. Um, let's see, real estate, I can say, oh, my grandfather used to have rental properties. So okay. from maybe a teenager, okay. I've had some kind of interaction, whether it's writing stuff down when his hands start getting a little stiff or whatever. Okay. So it's never, it's always been there in some capacity. And then my mom's a real estate agent. Okay. And I'm like, I just want to do something where I can have the freedom to like go to the kids' stuff at school okay. when they need okay. it. Or I don't want to have to rely on latchkey and all that. So she's like, why don't you try it? And I kind of shied away from it at first. And I'm like, I don't want to just walk in. And that like didn't sound exciting okay. to me. And then I was like, okay, I'm just, I just did it. And it's been five years now. All right, that, all right. I've been a real estate agent full time. All right. Okay. When you say full time, how did you go about becoming that full time agent? Okay. There's um, it's a forty hour class. It's okay. not as extensive as some people may think. Okay. Um, you can take it online or in person. Okay. It might be like a couple hundred dollars, and okay. then when you finish your forty hour class, um, you go to the state and you have to pass the state exam. Okay. How long is this a state exam? How many questions or? A hundred. And thirteen okay. questions or something okay. like that. And you only have to have like a seventy five percent Okay. Which is not strenuous. So okay. Okay. It's, yeah, it's it's um it's a lot of information in the in the forty hour class. It okay. is. I wouldn't say like, oh, it's just a piece of cake. I mean if you have a good memory, maybe it's a piece of cake, but there are like a lot of laws and okay. rules that you need to be aware of. But I think it's a very rewarding okay. um career, especially um for African Americans to okay. help families become homeowners. Okay. You have that's like the start of generational wealth and okay. a curve in where we stand in okay. economics. Okay. So yeah. hey, man, that's awesome. Because I at one point wanted to be a real estate agent mm -hmm. because I like well, I have property that I rent out mm -hmm. as my own. But my personality is, <laughs> is like <laughs> Uh, I will talk to you just a little bit. Then I want to go on to the next. <laughs> so yeah. how did you get this involved? <laughs> Sometimes you have a different hat. I've been like a counselor. I've had people cry oh, about oh, stuff that's on. not even related to okay. the transaction at hand. But you have to stay open to making them comfortable okay. with working with you and like genuinely be that way. Not okay. just like they can tell, like she really doesn't want to be bothered with me, but you okay. have to genuinely have that about yourself. A personality I've actually, wants to interact? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I've actually had clients come to me, like I was working with this other agent and they were horrible. Okay. Like who wants to take on or engage in one of their biggest purchases with somebody who doesn't even pay attention pretty much to it. letting them know they don't want to be bothered. Oh, yeah. Goodness. So, Oh my goodness. Because you have some that are just like certain price points they don't okay. want to be bothered with because okay. it's not enough in the commission check for them. So it oh. depends on, you know, what your goal is. If you're really trying to help families, okay, help people, you know, get to the next phase in life or have an okay. accomplishment, whatever their accomplishment is, then that would be, I would say, definitely entertain it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is some, you're helping people get, like you said, to the next level. Mm -hmm. And this is, okay. How do you pick your clients then? Your clients pick you. Uh oh. <laughs> you don't pick your clients. Okay. I mean, you can choose to work with or not to work with okay. a client, but yep, you're on the auction block. You're out here. You're for, okay. You're for sale too. So uh oh. You have to, you know, get out in the community and advertise yourself. You can okay. use social media, whatever. But the best one is word of mouth. 
Okay. So if you treat your clients with integrity and, you know, be just give them a wealth of knowledge okay. on how the process works, okay. not just pushing things at them and just treat them over well, just be a great person. They'll refer you other people and then okay. it just like snowball okay. effect from there. Then I'm going to go to the fact of, okay, a lot of people believe that they've got to work with an agency. So you're an independent real estate agent? Our agents are independent, but okay. your license does have to be under a brokerage. Okay, explain that. So you get paid like a 1099, you're like a contractor Okay. from the brokerage that you work up under because there's like insurance and other things that you have to have. Okay. And you can't just go out on your own. Okay. Now, if you become a broker, broker yourself, then okay. you don't have to work up under a brokerage. But as a licensed agent, you do have to work under a broker. And so the broker covers your insurance and everything else. And uh, most people think, amen, me included, that it would be me, myself, and I am, I'm the one who's controlling my income. But this is not true. It is to a point. So to it depends point. on okay. whatever contract you get under with your broker. There could be um, a flat fee that you pay per transaction. Okay. Or there could be um, a percentage you pay tr uh, per transactions. You may go to a brokerage and they say, we do 70-30. So you get 70% of the check and I get the other 30%. Okay. Or you can go to a brokerage to say that we charge $500 per transaction, no matter how much what that? the commission check is for. So they keep their five, give you the rest. Okay. But you're responsible for taxes and everything and if you don't work you don't get paid so if you don't work you don't get paid <laughs> but you still had to do make sure that you as a person individual mm -hmm. keep good records yes you do okay so you have to keep your receipts because you do you spend money okay um whether it's on advertisement or if it's a listing you may spend money on photography and putting okay. your sign out okay and, uh Getting it posted, the property posted in different areas. Okay. You have gas and mileage on your okay. car. These are things you have to really you, keep you, track of. Of course, you're going to need your cell phone or computer. Okay. Internet. So okay. It's, it's expenses that come along with it, but um, they can be very rewarding. Okay. The, the question, too. Too, the, okay, when you're making these records, mm -hmm. have you ever had any problems with the IRS? I have not. Okay, you but, need a good tax account when you go okay. in too. Once so, you okay. tell them what you do for a living and give them that ten ninety nine, hopefully you have somebody that asks you the right questions. Okay, so that they can get everything um, done correctly on your taxes because you don't want a problem with the IRS. So the next thing you would suggest <laughs> is not just going for the class and taking the lessons and being licensed, but getting under a brokerage firm that you trust. That you trust. Amen. So you got to do some homework, too. You do. And then also making sure you keep all of your records. Mm -hmm. And then the next one was getting an, what, a CPA or an accountant, accountant who would help you Yes. answer all the questions that you need. Yes. Oh, right. I wouldn't try to do it on my own at home. I would rather a professional take care of that. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask this, okay, because okay. I like bookkeeping, bookkeeping. Okay. Okay. So do you have a specific program that they recommend or you had to go out and do your own bookkeeping kind of thing no because i like bookkeeping too so okay. i just have all these spreadsheets <laughs> that i've had even before i became a real estate agent so okay like i know how much i spent on each transaction okay i put gas because you know most of the time you go to the gas station they don't give you a okay. receipt but right. i do ask okay so i can file those away okay. and bills that are related to real estate i just okay. keep them all together and okay I know she probably hates to see me come with my big folder okay. at tax time. Like, here's okay. all my stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> see, I guess maybe I'm more of a, okay, I've got these computer programs that I'll put all my little receipts in. Are you scanning me in? Nope. I haven't gotten that good yet. <laughs> uh, see, yeah, I keep the physical copy, so I give her those. But yes. then I have a spreadsheet that okay. I'll say here. Okay. Here's everything, and there's the receipts to match if you need okay. to cross-reference something. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is not just... Oh, I'm going to sell a house. This is, takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. And a lot of integrity. Yes. Because you can sell mm, a home to somebody that's not up to par. A lot. See? Some of them oh, are not up no. to par. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> so do you recommend or do you work with a person who goes out and do inspections for you? Or? I always, always highly recommend home inspections. 
And sometimes when buyers are always um, financially sound, they try to skip that. Okay. But I'm almost to the point where I say, no, we can't, we can't okay. do that because I'm not a home inspector. I'm not okay. going to crawl through the attic and Thank tell you. you if it's safe or sound, but okay. you need to know. Okay. Because why would you want to pay a hundred thousand dollars, which you're going to pay more than that after over time. But why okay. would you want to pay a hundred thousand dollars for this house and not know when you can spend two, three hundred dollars to know See, and if it's even worth the investment for you. Thank you. And yeah. a lot of people, like you say, like to skip out on it because they think it's too expensive. Yeah, I had a client skip uh -oh. out on it. And then she called me and she says, there's no outlet to plug the stove in. And I said, well, you're going to have to get one installed. Well, shouldn't they come fix that? No, it's your house now. All right, see. And we're not pulling out stoves and refrigerators. Like, we're not even... You can't just go in your house and start moving stuff around okay, like okay. that. But had you had an inspector, he would have looked back there to tell you if it was the right outlet for right. it, if there was one even back there. So things like this, like, don't, please don't, don't do skip it. out. All right. Good <laughs> advice. Yes. Amen. And I'm going to say this, too. Do you work with a Pacific one or you got people that you feel are on have, up and up? Yeah, I have two that I kind of heavily rely on. Okay. But it's totally, totally the buyer's. Choice, choice to pick okay. whomever they want to pick. Okay. If they ask for a recommendation, here are my favorite two. Okay. Um, but that's totally their choice. I'm going to ask a question. Do you advise your client to go with the person who's doing the home inspection because, or do they just, the home inspector just walk through? If they can, I advise them to go because okay. that's yours. Yes. That property is going to be yours. Okay. So if they just, for instance, you get the CD and it tells you or email report with everything that's wrong with the house and you're looking at it, you have no idea what they're talking about. Okay. But if you're there, they can go and point out to you okay. what they're talking about and show you the things instead of you later on trying to guess. Okay. Or in most, I'm almost 90% sure that most people don't even sit there and read through the whole thing. Oh, okay. See? Yeah. So some of them have like a key findings report where the major things that are wrong, they just put that up there up front. So they make, you shouldn't, you don't have to comb through all of it. I'm oh, right. giving it to you. All right. So here's it up front. And the two that I work with, they'll tell me like, this one has it's this not, problem. The okay. roof is not bad or this one or they're okay. like, Oh, it's a cool home, maybe a few things. Because there's usually always something okay. wrong, even if it's brand new. There's always something. So, All right. Yeah. We thank you. I have learned a lot <laughs> on you. this real estate <laughs> agent. Amen. So we thank and praise you. Thank you for just joining me today. Thanks for having wait, me. Wait, wait. I'm going to have you back because I've got some more questions. Okay. Amen. Because this is a very interesting young lady. The single mom who's raising the children she is a real estate agent, so we thank her for joining us on our show. So I'm asking you to tune in again to The Total You with me, your hostess, Boris Wallace. Again, on Sundays at 7 p.m. Thank you.